first and foremost, it's a it's an honor to uh, be in the NCAA tournament. You know, you never want to take that for granted, for sure, because it's it's an earned opportunity, and everybody, all 64 teams that are playing this coming weekend, earn that right, and we did as well because of what we've done uh, over the course of the entire regular season. You know, a lot of times, lots to be is to be made of what you've done lately, and certainly, you know, we were not. Uh, playing great Virginia baseball last week at the ACC tournament. That said, there's been many years that we didn't play well in that tournament and went on and made runs to Omaha. So, you know, we've talked a lot about in, on our team over the last three or four days that we need to be better and get better and that we've earned the right to be able to uh, play this next weekend. So we're, we're excited about uh, the opportunity in front of us. Uh, Coastal Carolina certainly has a uh, tremendous storied baseball program, having won the national championship the year after we did. Um, they have an uh, enormous investment in their baseball program. they got a terrific facility. they got a great coaching staff, and, and we know we're very familiar with them. So, um, you know, it'll take everything that we have, and we'll have to play – uh, great baseball to to win on Friday and and uh, and look forward to the opportunity. Oh, how much for your returning players do you think the experience and the success you had on the road in the yeah. NCAA tournament last year? How much does that help going into this? Well, I think it helps. You know, um, certainly you want to be playing at home, and we didn't earn that uh, right to be able to play at home this weekend. And so, certainly you reflect back on the success that you have had on the road in this tournament um, to navigate to ultimately get to Omaha. And we've had a lot of success with it in, in our time here. Uh, certainly the most um, re recent was last year and what we did down in South Carolina to, to eventually navigate our way there. Um, so um, certainly half the team uh, on this year's team knows and was in that dugout last year and knows what it takes and the kind of effort and execution that it takes to be successful. So, you know, we'll we'll talk about that and we'll reflect on that a little bit and, and use that. And, and then there's a lot of new guys that need to learn and understand what it takes to, to win at a place like East Carolina or, you know, against a great opponent in this tournament like uh, Coastal Carolina. What will you... What will be your message to these guys that kind of get things re-kick-started again? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's really just getting back to what has made us successful. And that's, um, you know, being a little bit better on the mound than we've been. You know, we need to get good quality starts, uh, play good defense. I've talked about that a little bit all year. And when we've done that, we've been very, very successful when we haven't and essentially handed the other team uh, some free passes and easy opportunities, we haven't been successful. So that's that's where it starts. It'll always start in this program on the mound and defensively for us. And then, you know, being a little bit more opportunistic. Hey, we've, we faced some great arms in the ACC tournament. The two lefties from Florida State and the, the starter for Notre Dame was, was terrific. Uh, that said, those are the kind of pitchers you face this time of the year because everybody earned the opportunity. So, you know, we've got to just be a little bit better than we were last week. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had spurts this year where we've been phenomenal, right? And we've got, to, we've got to get on one of those spurts. That's what it's like. You know, that's what we did last year. Whoever does that this next weekend and the weekend after will find themselves in Omaha. And you either have high-level performances by enough individual players or you don't. If you don't, you're home. If you do, you got a shot. And that's what we need to focus on. We need a number of guys to step up and – and um, you know, play championship baseball. How do you talk about, you talk yeah. about the pitching there? Was, you know, last year obviously you got a lot of great quality stars from guys. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of get off to a better start with some of those guys? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, they just need to do it. You know, I mean, there's no uh, secret sauce that I have or that I can say to them. It's just uh, it comes from inside them. You know, this time of the year, and it did for those guys. You know, is they've got to be focused and and do the little things that it takes to be successful, and then you know they've got to rise up in the moment, and that's uh, that's built inside them. That's in their that's in their heart, and that's in their gut, and you know they. You know, they need to rise to the occasion, and I, I think we have certainly have the individuals that are, have shown that they're capable of doing that. When you were leaving Charlotte, you said you guys were going to focus on these minute details. What yeah. was this weekend like, uh, being back in Charlottesville yeah. and knowing, waiting for this election show today? Well, it was, uh, I can tell you it hasn't been easy on the players. Um, uh, our practice on uh, yesterday on Sunday was the most challenging practice, toughest practice, longest practice, most intense practice that they have had since the preseason. 
and um, that's what we need to do. Uh, we needed to pay back the baseball gods and, and do the things the right way and uh, get focused and, and, and with hard work. And so we did that yesterday. We had a great workout this morning. We'll continue with that, with that approach. And, and when you practice that way and you approach that way, you feel like you are ready to have success. And so um, that's always been the staple of our program, and we'll continue to do that. Yeah, you know, uh, it's just uh, get, getting, you know, refocused back on the right approach. And, and uh, that's being aggressive, right? And, um, you know, again, and having individual players rise up and step up, um, you know. And so, hey, sometimes in this game, people just have great outings on the mound, you know, and, and it's, it's not, a, you know, you do the best you can. Um, but uh, I'll say that we got we to gotta be a little bit better and we're, we're focused on, you know, just battling at the plate, finding ways to get on. And then, you know, candidly, we, we need guys that need to uh, drive in runs and a few guys to knock the ball the ballpark. And, um, you know, that's what's made us successful offensively. And when we don't do that, we have a tough time winning. So. Is Ortiz an option on the mound? In the yeah, I think he's always an option. He actually threw in a scrimmage this morning. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be very limited this weekend, but um, it's always an option. You know, he he wants to do it. He's doing everything he can to prepare himself. I, we'll just have to kind of see how the weekend goes along. If Ortiz is an option, that means you've got four guys that pitched last postseason. How yeah. much do you have to kind of lean on their experience? You have to lean on a lot, you know, um, certainly. You know, Savino did some good things last year in the postseason. Matt Wyatt did. Um, you know, obviously Ortiz did. Um, you know, Gursky's going to, you know, he's going to start a game. I don't know whether it's Friday, you know, or Saturday yet. We'll see. We'll make that decision in the next 48 hours probably when we get a chance to really dissect these teams. Uh, but, you know, he hasn't had that opportunity, but he's, hey, the guy's second team all conference. He's won a lot of big games for us this year, and he'll he'll do the job again for us this weekend. And so, you know, part of our, our job over the next 24 hours is to evaluate these teams, right, um, that, that um, you know, that are on the uh, – in the tournament this weekend, um, starting with Coastal Carolina. You know, other than knowing their program, we haven't played them in a long while, so we've got to dive in and see what they're all about. You know, East Carolina, we – we played them this fall. They were one of our fall scrimmages, and and um, you know, so we know a little bit about them. And obviously, they've had tremendous success over the last four weeks and winning 18 in a row is really, really hard to do. And then Coppin State certainly earned the right to play, uh, being a conference champion. Um, so we've, you know, we'll kind of dive into that over the next uh, 24, 48 hours to kind of see, you know, what are the teams that we're playing, and you know, and then ultimately decide what are the best pitching matchups for us. Now that the seen the entire tournament field how close do you think you came to hosting would would uh, a win against Notre Dame have been enough or would you have I think we would have had to win more than that you know uh, I think that we probably would have had to win a couple of games in Charlotte or win a second game at, at Louisville um, I think it came down the last couple of weeks and you know uh, we didn't do it that said you know it's not a it's not a failure, you know. I mean, here we are, a two seed in the NCAA tournament. You know, it's hosting a regional is a really, really hard thing to do, and and you've got to be consistent throughout the season. One, or you've got to just be extremely hot the last four weeks, like like East Carolina and North Carolina have done, and uh, uh, we've had a tremendous year. Um, you know, uh, even though you know you you would love to host. You know, the five times we've been to Omaha, we've actually proven that maybe we're better off on the road. I mean, there's been a lot of times we've hosted in this ballpark and been majorly disappointed in the regional or super regional. Uh, you know, I, I, one thing I've learned over the years is when you host, there's a lot of pressure when you host too, because every prognosticator out there is saying that you should advance, right? And so sometimes, you know, packing up the bus, going on the road, staying in a hotel, you know, not having to worry about making weather decisions and things like that. You just show up and play when they tell you to play, and you play loose um, can at times be a real, real big advantage. How do you feel about the health of the team right now? I feel great. I, th I think we're in a terrific health uh, situation. Everybody that's, uh, that's eligible uh, to play is, is able to play for us, and, and um, so, you know, we're in, a, we're in a great spot with all that. When you have so many young players on mm -hmm. your st starting rotation, 
specifically? Yeah. Are you and the coaching staff kind of teaching them the ropes? Is it more on these veteran players? How is that um, just going into this postseason? I think it's a, it's, it's a combination. You know, I just talked to the team and shared with them about years that we haven't had success in the ACC tournament and then how we've turned it on this time of the year, right? And uh, that, um, you know, any situation we go into, we want to win, and we're, we were disappointed we didn't win last week, but we've got to turn the page, and uh, we've got to learn from it. That it has no bearing on the success that we could have uh, this weekend. So, um, you know, we're constantly talking to them about situations, and I know the veteran players, that, that's what leadership does is kind of help guide those, those young guys and teach them, you know, what, what, what we're capable of doing and what can happen. Last year, obviously, you'll always point to that Georgia Tech series as kind of the turning point of the season. Do you kind of see right now as, you know, maybe you kind of, you know, dig your feet in and kind of this is the turning point right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope so. You know, that's that's what we're that that's what we're focused on. We obviously don't know and until it plays out, right? Um, it, listen, I mean, we're, there's there's four teams in in East Carolina this weekend that are all really really good teams, and so. Uh, you know, we don't. We're not, I'm not going to sit here and predict what's going to happen. I will predict that our guys will be ready, and uh, we'll play with everything we've got. And hopefully, you know, we, you know, we execute and have a little bit of good fortune. And maybe weeks down the road, we can look back and say, "Hey, getting going 0 and 2 in the ACC tournament is the best thing that happened for us because it got us refocused and got us back on track." And you know, only time will tell on that. Uh, that said, I think there's numerous points throughout the year that. You know, our guys stepped up after, you know, after we went to Miami and got swept and got beat two out of three at Pitt, you know, I thought our guys did a nice job of, you know, getting back together and getting right in the ship and getting it headed back in the right direction. Listen, this league that we play in is, is incredibly challenging. You know, it just, um, you know, nine teams just got in the NCAA tournament, the SEC and ACC tied for nine, you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I feel for NC State, you know, that shows you how hard it is to get in. And NC State's got an unbelievable ball club and they didn't get in, right? And so that sh proves the strength of this league. And so, you know, in order to for sure take it out of the committee's hands to be playing this weekend in this league, you've got to win more than you lose, all right, in league games. And we finished 17 and 13 and fifth in the league. And so, uh, we've earned that right, and we just need to play great baseball, and I believe we will this weekend.